Good morning, my name's Mike Madden. I'm here today on April 7, 2009 with Laddie Chapman to interview the Jorneses in a Door County institution, the Jorn Sugar Bush. The star of our show today, though, is going to be the maple tree. The uh, sugar maple is uh, very important historically in Door County and northeastern Wisconsin and the Midwest and Canada for the product that the Native Americans taught us about, maple sugar and maple syrup. I'd like to introduce Roy Jorns. He is someone who has more experience than anyone else I know in making the maple products that we all enjoy. Roy, what do we have here? Well, we, we have an aluminum bucket with a cover on, and uh, I believe it's got a 5 uh, spout, which is something new now. We're trying to uh, get the trees to heal up faster, a smaller hole, and we found that they're practically the same volume coming out of there as with a bigger spout, so that's a plus. I've got several thousand that I've changed over. And I'm real happy about that. Well, that's good. The other spiles were at least a half inch hole you had to make, weren't they? Well, it's, uh, the last one <coughs> were 7 16 But in my early days, they were down to a uh, half inch. So. And how big does a tree have to be before you can tap it? Well, we like to at least get them 10 inches. 12 inches is better. I don't like to scar up the tree before it gets mature enough. I think it's... Uh, uh, I see different ones that have tapped smaller trees and I just don't like it because it's hard on that tree. I see it's running today. It feels kind of cold out today. It's about 32 degrees and it seems to be dripping quite well. Well, it froze last night and that makes the big story and it's warming up nice today. So, uh, uh, yeah, that'll do it. That's the trick, the freezing nights and the warmer days, isn't it? Exactly. What is your percentage of sugar this year? Well, it's been running like two and a half, but we've been getting, earlier in the season, we've been getting a lot of uh, freezing, hard freezes at night, and there's a lot of ice in the buckets, and of course, it's a little extra work taking that ice out, but we dump the ice out, which concentrates the sap. Unless it's frozen straight through, uh, by throwing the ice away, you've, you, you're condensing. I heard. In earlier years, it was uh, thought that maybe that was the way to, to, to do it, but the freezing of the sap was too expensive, so that, that was abandoned. I read once that the Native Americans probably did that, let it freeze and picked out the ice to help reduce the... I would imagine they, they were the beginners of this. Yes, <laughs> we have them to thank for all the work you've done for 70 years. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yes. How often do you have to dump that bucket? I, if they run, I do it every day, every day that they're running, and I make it a practice that that syrup is, that sap is processed within 24 hours. In fact, it's, pra it's processed before I go to bed that day. Or you don't and, go to bed. <laughs> and some days I go to bed when, when it's getting light out. The season, well, it's April 7th. We're getting near the end of the season, do you think? Right, right. This is... Uh, the very last, I'm sure. One or two more days and I, I don't think it can continue. When did you start this year? Oh golly, um, probably around the uh, middle of, of March. Okay. Yeah. The Are snow, you... The snow was terribly deep earlier. <laughs> Some people had started a little bit earlier than we did, but we're in a valley and we get snow from them, you know, drift, drifting in here, so. It's always exciting to start, but I bet near the end that it's, it's, it's exciting for it to be over, too. Well, I'm today <laughs> almost exhausted. <laughs> I think we should mention, Roy, what is this part for? Well, that's a cover to keep, uh, keep the sap, uh, keep the pail clean inside. There's bird droppings and bark and, you know, and rainwater, you know, so. Well, if it rains, it would make more work, I suppose, to... Well, it, it, yeah, and you get the, the coloration from the bark, you'd be making a darker syrup. So, yeah, that's very important. I've seen where some sugar bushes are now using a lot of the plastic tubes. Do you do any of that? 
No, I don't. I thought about it, but I have about six, seven different woods, and uh, the expense of the pumps in each woods would be quite out. And I will say, and I'm, I, I, I figure that we make the best syrup with the buckets. Every single bucket gets washed perfectly with bleach and packed away and air dried with tubing. If you get a sag, you know, that stays in there. And uh, usually, usually if they leave them hang about 10 years life on that tubing, if they take them off and wash them, clean them good, and it costs a lot to do that. It's special pumps and that. You can probably get 20 years out of it. But uh, it's not cheap either. So I have these by the thousands. So I'm at that age, I don't think I want to change. No. You said you have about a thousand buckets or? Thousands. Thousands? Thousands. How many did you tap this year? Uh, around 4,000 only. The snow was deep and the season was on and you know how that works. That means you have to pick up 4,000 buckets almost every day? Yeah. <laughs> that must be a, quite a job. Well, I got, I've got, i got a few guys. Uh, the door is a little too far on, yeah. How far do you drill into the tree to put this spile in? Well, I don't like to overdo it because most of the sap is right close to the bark. And uh, there's a little trick to driving that spout in that you don't drive it in too far and you know and close off that cambium layer too tight or if you leave it too loose it, your bucket will course will fall off so it's a it's a kind of a touch and go in there and you have to have the right feel and the right sound of that hammer and you told me when you started you used the old brace and bit to put the uh, hole in what do you use now well, now we're using the Devault uh, battery tappers, and they work well. Okay, a Much type of easier. cordless power drill type. Uh, right, right. Uh, is there a certain height you should put these, or? Well, uh, when you tap, you want to alternate the, the, the uh, tapping zone. Like, you should be up, and then you should stay away about two inches the next tapping year and come down so that you don't build up a scarred uh, area, scarred area here. So I, I, as I go around the tree, it's, you know. Okay, and you can tap them every year? Yeah, oh yeah. I've uh, <clears throat> seen a, uh, well, in fact, my grandfather passed away in 1896 and I inherited his wooden buckets, 350 of his wooden buckets and his files that were that were patented in 1884. <laughs> yeah, and I've I've tapped that woods every, every year since way back in 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 the late 30s. Yeah. So it really doesn't matter what side of the tree you put it on, or well, the most people prefer the south side, at least for the beginning. As their trees maybe have been tapped a hundred times, they might start have to head for the back. But if you have a large tree, uh, and there again, I want to emphasize that only one tap on a tree of this size, when you get like 15 inches, then you can put two on. But we don't want to overbuse that tree. So it is feasible you might have a tree in your sugar bush that's been tapped for 100 years. Oh, more than that. Yep. <laughs> well, that's exciting. Thank you, Roy. <laughs> yeah. Would you show us how you get the sap from the bucket to your sugar shack? What process you use? Well, I can do that. The tractors are right over there. Thank you. I see you have an Oliver and a Farmall. How long have you been using this, this equipment? Uh, for many years. <laughs> I, uh, I had one tractor that I had packed away last night that went down on me. The starter kept running on me, so I had to shut that down. But before the tractors, I used horses. 
Roy, this looks like the bulwark part of the process here. Uh, you got that right. Yeah. <laughs> what, tell us what happens from the bucket to, to here. Well, we usually have about seven, eight fellows, and, and uh, we take the buckets from the tree and dump it into our pails, and of course they just walk it to the uh, gathering tank, and, and uh, just like that. And of course the gathering tank has a screen inside and a splash proof area and to keep the debris and all that out, you know, the little sticks and so forth. Well, you mentioned some of your bushes are a mile or more away, so right. this is how you get it from there to right. this part. We also use the uh, truck. We haven't this year because we're down on numbers, but we have a truck with that holds about 2,000 gallons and, and uh, that cuts those long trips off because it's cold uh, on the road. <laughs> I remember, and this always makes me laugh, I had tanks up here, huge tanks out in the woods, and I had to dump those milk cans in those tanks, <clears throat> and I developed arms that you wouldn't believe. My daughter was complaining up here uh, when she was about 16, 17 years old. I was working in, a, in my barn, and I said, give me a hand, and she said, I can't. I'm hurting all over. I said, from what? She said, I had to do chin-ups. And I said, well, you must have done about 50 of them. She said, I can only do two. So I said, come here. I said, put your arms around my back, or on my shoulders. I called the son over. He was a senior. I said, put your arms in front. And with those, I chinned myself. <laughs> and I never got another peep about <laughs> <laughs> Nobody complained anymore, no. It will develop you. It, that, this and the milk cans will certainly develop big arms. It certainly looks like a lot of work. Uh, now, Definitely. when will they come to pick up today or a normal day? Well, uh, it isn't. it froze heavy last night, so the group is going to start at noon. And besides, we had a little extra activity. We have uh, a woman's uh, club coming here, so we didn't want to have too much going on at once. Burn the syrup. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, after we put it in these tanks, or after you do, I should say, and your crew, where does it go from here? Well, we drive right up that ramp. Okay. And uh, then we just, we have a trough that goes, in, that goes into a big strainer. We just drop this down, and it's on a, that's the easy part. Now, I've read about sugar bushes. They'd often put their tanks on a hill, but you've built your own hill, it looks like here. I, I built it, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's see where it goes after it goes into the building, then. Okay. Okay. 